Kazulov and all the warriors of his tribe set themselves out in woad and lime, in gold and silver torques and armbands, with oval leather shields, with spears, javelins, daggers, swords, with two-wheeled, two-pony kovini, some with thighs attached to their axles, and were naked, bluer than death, hair and spikes like the sun's rays at dawn, like the neck of a fighting cock. Kazulan and his men would ride out from behind a hill or a rock or a clump of trees into the armored marching troops of the Romans, zigzagging in short, blinding dashes, hurling javelins, then spears, rushing through stumble-weighted Roman warriors, their swords lopping heads as they scythed through Corvini, cut through the legs of any man or horse that came near. Then, in a flash, they turned their ponies and still at a gallop and dashed zigzagging. They dash away, the belated weapons of the Romans missing them, or most of them, as they gallop dangling two or three severed he Roman heads in the air, whooping and shouting their victory home to hang the heads over the doors of their huts or let them join the family at dinner as a centerpiece. Four thousand Covini Casalon had, eight thousand ponies galloping, eight thousand thighs on axles, uncountable javelins and spears and sword thrusts, and then dash away before a Roman sword could hurriedly be unsheathed. And they went back again the next day and the next. Any enemy that the Catavolani had ever encountered would have broken up and vanished under such treatment. But the disciplined troops of Rome held firm, closed its gaps, marched on. Sometimes a group of Roman soldiers would follow the Covini on their big horses, and then the fleeing Catavolani would lead them into an ambush, lead them like the mother grouse leads the predator with its pretense of a broken wing, lead them into an ambush, take their heads and their horses, and call it another battle one. But still, the Roman troops marched on. Thank you. 